So this, my friends, is a problem. And this is what happens when you have this problem. Now, for those of you guys who have no idea what we're looking at, let's talk about it. So what we're looking at is a flat tappet lifter pulled out of a 347 stroker that has only been in this 1976 Bronco for a little over two years. Now what some of you may realize is that this lifter has gone bad. Bad lifter. When a lifter goes bad, it's only a matter of time before the camshaft starts to wear down as well. Now what would cause this, some of you may ask? Well, aside from maybe cheap parts, flat tappet lifters are infamous for needing some type of zinc additive in the oil in order to function properly. They're very needy to say the least, but what does that have to do with my engine being tore apart? Well, travel back with me to Friday, May 29th of this year, where I had been tackling a vacuum leak, and after pulling the manifold, replacing the gaskets, reinstalling everything, and almost blowing the shop up, I decided to change the oil as well. And if those of you watching had to guess what I forgot to do when I changed the oil, you'd probably say put the drain plug back in. And that is not what happened, okay? I'm not that stupid, but, I was ignorant enough to not use any kind of zinc additive in the oil. Now Mitch, that probably wasn't a huge issue and normally I'd agree with you, but hear me out. I get my rig all buttoned back together literally the day before the Wild Horses Roundup. Saturday comes, I do a 30 minute cruise and after that I pull the Bronco on the trailer and head out in the morning for the off-road park where day two of the Roundup was being held. I practically do no rock crawling while I'm there as I'm busy trying to keep the event running smooth, which thank goodness, it went great. All is well, I pull the pit bull back onto the trailer with a sigh of relief. Monday rolls in, I roll the pit bull off the trailer and as I'm pulling into the shop, I start to hear a horrible knocking noise. Now, we did a whole video working on diagnosing that noise, so watch that if you haven't already. But what I found was in two days of doing that oil change without adding any zinc, I had a lifter go bad. Sounds pretty fishy if you ask me. So, as I said in the last video, I ended up removing my grill, tearing apart my engine, and pulling the camshaft. It was in fact pretty beat up and pretty lobed. So, here we are with the lobed camshaft and an engine that probably needs to be completely pulled and cleaned professionally. Now, I did all that work that I talked about over two months ago, and I put it out on social media asking you guys what route you thought I should go. New engine, rebuild the old one, etc. And a lot of people said go full roller. A lot of people also said go with the Coyote, but what do I look like, a freaking bank? Anyways, before I reveal what route I decided to go with, I've got an engine to pull, and although it's been two months, I still haven't looked at the oil in this thing, so be my guest. That's interesting. Alrighty folks, so we interrupt this program to just highlight, we're only like a turn and a half on this drain plug and or we've got coolant coming out, which is fun and it's fine and it probably came from opening up the, uh, the water pump and all of that crap and whatever, the timing chain cover. So that's what I'm hoping, but if not, that was an even bigger problem than we thought. But I figured that was interesting enough for any of you guys who know that that's not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> but let's get this freaking drain plug off and see what else we've got hiding in here. Alrighty folks, so as this oil drains slowly <laughs> out of that oil pan. Rather than wait until that's completely out, we're gonna start unloosening some of these bolts and taking a look at that oil later. Just due to the fact that, you know, because of that exhaust pipe, this is literally gonna take forever. And maybe fix that in the future. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But let's start uh, loosening up basically the six, seven bolts that I've got left. And this should go fairly quickly. Those are always famous last words when working on a classic vehicle, so. 
I just screwed myself. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this engine's ready for an engine hoist. Alrighty folks, so per the typical one hour on paper, five hours in actual time ratio, uh, we are actually gonna call it today because we did in fact run out of time and as much as I would like to work through the night, uh, we have to take off. So I'm gonna wrap up pulling this engine tomorrow and uh, we're gonna fill you guys in on the future plans that we've got for the pit bull. So stick around for that, we will be back in just a few seconds. Peace. Alrighty folks, day two. Long overdue process of pulling this engine yet again. So, let's get to work. So, it was a moment of victory up until I realized I have got two wires that are run through this chain. One of them, it looks like I can disconnect. The other one, I may have to just cut and cinch back up. Oh no. Okay, let me take care of that real quick and then, then we'll pull the engine out. out. I should probably put this thing down. Alrighty folks, so we have got this sucker out. Now before I dive into the future plans for the Pitbull and this engine, I thought it would be important to highlight the fact that this is one of two engines that have had this problem. Not only did the Pitbull's lifter start going bad, but on my mom's Bronco with the exact same engine built around the exact same time and put in relatively around the same time, her lifters also started going bad and wearing out the cam. Now, that's a bummer because this has been her daily driver for the past two years, but it has also spawned the next upgrades for her Bronco and for the Pitbull. And that upgrade is in fact a full roller engine. You heard right guys, these two 347 strokers are going to be outfitted with full roller setups, from Edelbrock. Now, the obvious question is what is the exact setup that we're going to be doing with these 347 strokers? Now, I'm not going to dive into that in today's video, but what I am gonna try to do is get an Edelbrock rep here to explain it to you 10 times better than I could. So, if you guys wanna see that, leave it in the comments and I will do my best to make that happen. Now, one thing to discuss is because parts for these engines are expensive, while we like doing stuff ourselves, some things are better left to the professionals, like cleaning and outfitting a whole new engine. So, with that said, we are going to be taking these engines to a local shop called Valley Balancing, and they're gonna be going through them, cleaning them, putting all the internals back in, putting it all back together, buttoning it up, making it that full roller engine. Now, what I am gonna try to do is also get some videos with them that highlight some of the disassembly and assembly. So if you guys wanna see some of those videos, again, leave it in the comments. Give me some ammo to let them know that you guys want to see it and I will do my best to make that happen. Again, no promises, but help me out and we'll see if we can get that done. But there you have it, guys. The engine is back out of the pit bull. 
I'm kind of glad it's not the transmission to be honest, but uh, it's kind of the perfect time for all of this to go down. Again, you guys have heard me talk about it on the channel before. This is what I call the wheeling off season. Aside from maybe some snow wheeling trips that we've got in the future, we really don't do much during this time. So it's the perfect time to do this. I do hope to have all of this buttoned up uh, by the time the events start rolling in in 2023. So that's what I'm shooting for. That's my goal. We'll see if we can make it happen. But there you guys go. I tried to make this video for all of you who are asking me about the engine. Again, I made that video two months ago and I never had a follow up video. So a lot of you guys were asking questions. I hope I answered most of them. If you guys have any more, make sure you leave them down below. If you have any questions about the process that we've got in the future, or you have questions that you wanna see answered in future videos, then shoot them down below and we'll do our best to answer those for you guys. Now, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you do become one of the horsemen. We would love to have you. We're working really hard to build this channel and we would love for you guys to be a part of it. Make sure you like this video, share it with a friend. And with all of that being said, we will see you guys out there on the trail. Peace.